Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Microbiology Easy Notes. If you like this channel, please like, subscribe, comment and share. Today's topic is autoclave. In this topic, we will learn discovery of autoclave, principle, procedure, parts of autoclave, its types, uses, precautions during the autoclaving and advantages of autoclave. So let's begin. Before talking about autoclave, first understand what is sterilization. Sterilization is a process which kills all forms of microbes, whether it's a vegetative cell, spore cell or dormant cell. Sterilization process makes sure there is no contamination. After sterilization, survival chances of an organism or a cell is one in million. The process helps to sterilize various tools, devices and equipment used in medical laboratories and research centers. And the most effective way of sterilization in laboratories is use of autoclave. What is autoclave? Autoclave is a device that helps to achieve almost 100% sterilization using steam. It is able to kill any biological form of microbes that present on objects. It clears all sorts of contamination which can spoil the experiment, test or cause health hazard. Origin of word autoclave because it describes a device that automatically locks shut when the pressure rises to avoid steam spraying out if you open it by accident. The word is French and comes from the Greek word auto for automatic and the Latin word claves for key. Discovery of autoclave Since the ancient times, scientists are using boiling water to sterilize materials. In written text, it is found out that Hippocrates poured boiling water onto surgical instruments to clean them. Lazzaro Splenzani, an Italian biologist, discovered that it took 30 minutes to kill bacteria by heating them in a sealed glass flask. Louis Pasteur also believed heating is one of the most convenient methods for sterilization. Simple boiling at 100 degrees Celsius, however, is not completely effective for sterilization because many spores can survive this temperature. The current design of autoclave was largely finalized in the 1880s by Charles Chamberlain, a colleague of Pasteur. His work is inspired by Dennis Pepin, a physicist and one of the inventors of the steam engine. However, this was used solely for culinary purposes until Chamberlain's work. In this picture, you can see the steam engine designed by Dennis Pepin. The first commercial steam sterilization system intended for use on medical products was developed in 1889. And this is the first autoclave designed by Charles Chamberlain. Now the question is, how does autoclave work? What is the principle behind it? The basic principle behind autoclave is the use of steam under pressure. Generally, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. This temperature can kill only vegetative cells of microbes. Spores cannot be killed on this temperature. But above standard pressure, same water boils at 121 degrees Celsius. On this temperature, water steam can penetrate all biological forms of microbes. It denatures enzyme and destroys structural proteins resulting in death. Thus, autoclaving is a dependable procedure to kill all forms of life. The steam is provided to the objects for a specific period of time, otherwise 100% sterilization cannot be achieved. Autoclave can be compared with pressure cooker. It is as good as a pressure cooker, uh, wherein things can be cooked easily using steam. And now the procedure. Steam enters a chamber passing through an opening wall. Then it flows all around the chamber and load. Pressure regulators maintains the pressure of jacket and chamber at a minimum of 15 psi. This pressure is required for steam to reach 121 degrees Celsius. After sterilization is complete, steam is released through an exhaust wall. Pressure inside the chamber restored back to normal. Materials are taken out after they get cooled down. Parts of autoclave 
First is pressure chamber. It is the inner chamber made up of stainless steel or gun metal. Its capacity is around 100 litre to 3000 litre. This is the place where materials to be sterilized are kept. Next is lead or door. This is the next important part of an autoclave. It closes the chamber and it is made up of heavy gauge aluminium. Screw clamps and asbestos washer or neoprene rubber gasket are present on the lid which helps to airtight seal the mouth of an autoclave. It prevents the leakage of steam and helps to achieve sterilized environment inside the chamber. Next is pressure gauze. Pressure gauze indicates pressure inside the chamber. It assures the safety of the autoclave and the working condition of the operation. Safety valve. If autoclave fails to perform its action or the pressure inside increases uncontrollably, safety valve comes to an action. The valve has a thin layer of rubber that bursts itself to release the pressure and to avoid the danger of explosion. Next is pressure release valve. A whistle is present on the lid of the autoclave is the same as that of pressure cooker. The whistle controls the pressure inside the chamber by releasing a certain amount of vapor by lifting itself. Next is heat source or heat generator or electrical heater. Either the electrical heater or gas heater is there underneath to provide heat. In modern autoclave, an built electric heat generator is present and it is always submerged in the water. Types of autoclave. There are two types of autoclave. First is gravity displacement autoclave and the next is vacuum autoclave or pre-vacuum autoclave. Gravity displacement autoclave. This is the most common type of autoclave. In this type, steam is pumped into the chamber which displaces the ambient air and forces it out of exhaust walls so that the remaining steam can sterilize the contents. This is the most common type of autoclave as I said earlier which is used to sterilize laboratory media, surgical instrument and lab utensils, borosilicate glassware, medical and biohazardous waste that contains bacteria, viruses and other microbes. Vacuum autoclave or pre-vacuum autoclave. In this type, vacuum pump remove all the air present in the chamber and generated steam then fill the chamber. Vacuum autoclave is much more efficient than the gravity displacement autoclave as it allows steam to penetrate and sterilize hard reach areas that would normally be occupied by ambient air. This autoclave used to sterilize laboratory clothing, animal cages, beddings, pegged surgical items, dry items that can trap air, high density polyethylene products such as syringes. On the basis of structure, there are different types of autoclave. There is pressure cooker type, common laboratory autoclave, vertical autoclave, horizontal autoclave and large automatic hospital autoclave. And this is how the modern digital autoclave look like. Precaution during autoclaving. Paper, water resistant materials like oil and powder, flammable, Toxic, bleach, highly reactive and radioactive material should not be autoclaved. Items placed inside the chamber should not touch the sides or top of the chamber. Autoclavable bags should be used to package waste. Normal polythene bags cannot be used. There should be sufficient gap between all the items placed in autoclave chamber for steam to reach every corner. Disposable items and clean items should be autoclaved separately. Liquid items should not be autoclaved in sealed and tight containers. Container lid should be slightly loose and should be filled two-thirds. Never attempt to open the lid of autoclave in middle of the operation. Advantages of autoclave. It is non-toxic and safe, easy to operate and control, rapidly microbiocidal, less time consuming and higher percentage of sterilization can be achieved by autoclaving. Thank you for watching. That's all about the autoclaving.